so um, let's just go through a small case first 30 year old female minor fall from stairs um and she was seen in bangalore i mean no offense to any bangaloreites but she was seen she was told as a minor sprain is there in the midfoot and was put in a back slab and came back to mumbai seen by another senior orthopedic surgeon he thought that there was a fracture of the base of the fifth metatarsal put her in a boot for 6 weeks and then told her she is fine not a problem you can wait bear finally she presented to me 3 months later post injury with that with that kind of deformity um she was really not happy you can clearly see here uh, there's a big bulge happening on the on the medial aspect she is losing the arch if you look from the back how that is a normal 5 degrees of valgus here she is really going into 10 50 degrees of valgus so she is developing as girish has already mentioned a pest plano valgus type of a deformity and this is the kind of x-ray she has and clearly here you can see all the telltale signs of a miss les frank there's a gap opening between the first and the second the intercuniform has opened up as well the medial border of the second to the medial border of the intermediate that's been broken as well so this was clearly this could have been avoided if somebody would have followed the seven tips so girish you probably need to take another lecture for the bangalore rights no offense <laughs> so why the list frank mess we have already said that why list frank joints are important girish has already covered and my aim now is to how do we treat them do we conserve them fix them or fuse them and this has always been a dilemma for all surgical aspect uh, surg uh, all surgeons is it conservative or is it a surgical and if you look in the all the previous uh, literature and i think even our bosses list frank either way we were, were treating them in a plaster or maximum of kys and let's see if that is what we need to do so the goal of the treatment is a painless plantigrade and a stable foot where you maintain the anatomical alignment so the medial longitudinal arch is maintained and the lisfranc joint is a key um, uh, the keystone to this um, uh, the maintenance of the arch and that's what we need to achieve so how do we check for stability i think uh, girish elucidated a little bit on that but i will just uh, slightly go more in detail the definition of instability is where there is a greater than 2 mm shift in a normal joint position and the diastasis between the first and the second metatarsal in an injured foot is where it measures less than 2.7 is normal or it's stable if it is more than 2.7 it is unstable now this definition actually i wanted to ask girish on that and i think we will discuss that later it depends on if it is a weight bearing x ray or a non weight bearing x ray so non operative indication and these are very very far and few in between where there is a definitely a less than 2 mm indicate a displacement of the tfd joint in the, any plane and there is no evidence of joint line instability with weight bearing or stress radiograph now these two indications are very very clear and there and in your x rays you really have to prove that there is no displacement more than 2 mm at any point of time so that may be at week 1 week 2 or week 6 so non operative management recheck the stability with stress views at 10 days from injury and you give them a short leg non weight bearing cast for 6 weeks and you do a protected weight bearing for another 4 to 6 weeks so effectively taking a uh, time of 12 weeks in total but bear in mind your x rays have to be repetitively at least for the first 2 to 3 weeks and making sure there is no further displacement of more than 2 mm open reduction and internal fixation it gives the best results because it gives a stable uh, fixation the timing of the surgery people keep asking especially it is when the swelling is down so you don't want to operate where there is a massive swelling on the dorsum and the foot and you open it up and you cannot close the skin and these can be easily managed within the first 2 to 3 weeks of the injury of course if you have a severely displaced or a uh, uh, open fractures then these are surgical emergencies or if you have a vascular compromise or a compartment syndrome then that's a different kettle of fish these patients need to be taken to theater immediately they need to be sorted out especially the vascular the compartment syndrome or if it's an open fracture you need to reduce as best as you can and fix them with kys plus minus external fixator depending on the contamination of the wound you may want to come back later to do a definitive fixation or your definitive fixation maybe kys and an external fixation understand the anatomy on the dorsal aspect of the foot people especially who have not done lot of surgeries you need to understand what is happening here here you need to know tibialis anterior attachment 
extensor hallucis is longus and where is your neurovascular bundle in respect to your tmt joint because if you are doing list frank surgery these are the key things which you need to understand dorsal incisions are centered over the involved joints um and i used to approach the midfoot now the key thing understand before you take the knife and cut the skin you need to know which joints are involved in your list frank and which joint joints are going to stabilize example so before i do it i always even i know that i am going to do my list frank fixation but i am not sure about my first stage stability i would i would take the foot and stress it under the c arm and many times you may find that what you thought that the first tmt joint was stable you find that this is unstable then your approach will change significantly because if you are doing a first second and third then you may want to use two approaches your first tmt will you will do with a medial approach and the second and third you can do a uh, skin incision between the second and third tmt joint if you are doing only first and second then you can do with a one dorsal incision if you are doing only second and third then you can do with a one dorsal incision between second and third i hope that is clear so that's all, this is what i said before incision check for instability of the 1 2 3 tmt if planning to fix all the medial thing medial incision for the first and a dorsal incision between second and third now if the fixation of the first and second the incision is between the first and the second uh, metatarsal you take this incision here identify the neurovascular bundle you do, you retract the neurovascular bundle laterally then you approach the joint you clear up the joint you clear up the intermetatarsal space you once you cleared it up remove all the debris you reduce it and you pass a k wire now this is the key difference which i think a lot of a foot and ankle surgeons do compared to people who are not doing it regularly now i have seen even recently one of my colleagues passing a wire from the medial cuneiform into the into the base of the second now it is like going from a long bone to a small bone your your final target is a very small one you will chance of missing it why don't instead start from a small bone which is easily accessible and go into a longer or a bigger bone which is a medial cuneiform it's easier to get the target and it's not too fussy as well so you expose that and you send a wire from the second metatarsal base to the medial cuneiform remember this this is an extra articular wire it is not going through any of the joints once you reduce with a clamp reduce with a k wire check on the c arm that your medial border of the uh, uh, second tmt is aligned with the medial border of the middle cuneiform and you can see clearly here also that this is well reduced once it is reduced then you can check if your second third or fourth needs to be done as well and you can open that and then reduce those as well and the key thing then is you do your fixation your permanent fixation starts again with a list frank screw which is a screw going from the base of the second to the medial cuneiform understand two or three things of this this is a positional screw so you don't need compression so it's a fully threaded screw and the second thing is this is a fully threaded screw it is not a partially threaded screw and it's not a cannulated it's a fully threaded solid screw not a cannulated screw because the strength is better okay so once that's done and that's the fixation done and then you can do a plating which you can use a plate as a neutralization plate so that's where it shows that's gone through it and then you put a plate now also you would want to check if there is a intercuneiform instability as well if there is intercuneiform instability you can do a small lick on the medial side and you pass a screw through the medial to the intermediate cuneiform and once you have done your second and your third you have fixed your first as well then you can check on the lateral fourth and fifth those can be easily reduced and those need not be put screws or plates uh, k wires are good enough so that's why the lateral metatarsal requires only uh, pin fixation because you can remove them and those are quite a mobile fragments as well now there's there's quite a lot of debate in the literature is um, what do you do for a purely ligamentous uh midfoot injury i think the jury is out if if it is a, a athlete patient a high demand patient then a primary arthrodesis does better compared to a open reduction and internal fixation for purely ligamentous injury understand that now i have gone through plates i have gone to screws i have gone through fixation now, can we do anything better 
yes we can do something better which is called as a flexible lis franc fixation what do you mean by flexible so you have these suture buttons which we normally now use for syndesmotic fixation or um, uh, we use it in your spring ligament reconstruction your lateral ligament stabilization or a tight rope so you can use a tight rope for lis franc fixation because it maintains a stable anatomic reduction it is joint sparing it allows some degree of mobility and the key thing is none of this hardware needs to come out and we know that this is going to be a pertinent and a promising uh, thing to look out for the future and how do we do a flexible fixation i've already mentioned either you can use a tight rope or an internal brace which goes from the base of the second to the medial cuneiform or something this is another paper where they have something uh, like a jugad what we uh, tell in the indian terminology where they have done two screws a normal 3.5 screws going through the uh, either the medial and the base of the second and the and the intermediate cuneiform and they have used a fiber wire loop around 6 to 8 times it gives stability and at the same time it is slightly flexible and you don't need to remove this so this is like an indian jugad so just as a case uh, one A 34-year-old female involved in road traffic accident, treated in a cast. Two months later, you can see clearly this is opening up. There is a slight displacement, complaining of pain, weight-bearing X-rays. You can see here there's a, a flake sign. This is definitely opened up as well. See weight-bearing CT. I had access to that. It can see a displacement of 5.62 mm. So the clearly widening scene opened it up. um there you can see a big gap your periosteal elevator literally goes through this whole uh, uh first and the second metatarsal normally it should not put a clamp reduce it pass a wire across put a screw across and then i uh, put a plate and she went on to do very well one year later she came back six months removed the uh, implants and that's a weight bearing x rays nearly, uh, uh, nicely maintained arch as well So this is the algorithm for management of Lis Franc injuries. So your key thing is to find it is stable or unstable. If it is stable and there is plantar ecchymosis, do a weight bearing X-rays or a stress X-rays. And if you're sure of your stability, then a boot or a non-weight bearing for six weeks. If here you're unstable or high energy trauma, open fractures, these patients invariably will go for open reduction and internal fixation. purely ligamentous injuries you can think about lis franc arthrodesis as well now people keep asking me in india do we have special plates for lis franc yes we have available plates from multiple companies indian and overseas companies and these are different and special type of plates which we can use for fixation so post operatively these patients are maintained in non weight bearing uh, slab for four, for two weeks suture comes out non weight bearing for another six weeks then suture and then the cast comes out they are mobilized but non weight bearing and total non weight bearing i keep it for almost 3 months and then art support for almost 6 months to 12 months hardware removal uh, lateral kys can come out at 6 weeks otherwise they can come out at around 4 to 6 weeks and the time why 4 to 6 months is because that is the time it is required for the whole ligaments and soft tissues to heal and that is the reason kys are not um, uh, recommended for less frank complications i think uh, uh, he uh, girish has little bit discussed vascular injuries foot compartment syndrome and soft tissue uh, problems can be there late complications post traumatic arthritis at one point of time there was literature where they said all the frank injury irrespective they are fixed or not fixed they had 100% arthritis and that is because um, even if they were reduced uh, perfectly because of the damage from the trans articular screws Uh, because every screw damage is around 30% of the articular surface so if you had two screws going through the joint you will have almost 70% joint damage and they would have arthritis but they may not be symptomatic and that's why but now the joint spanning plates um, i don't think so we have enough literature on that what is the incidence of arthritis following that good or excellent results have been accomplished in 50 to 95% with anatomical alignment so the key thing is getting an accurate reduction and a fixation if you miss that boat then only one third of the patients do better um we have already spoken on that it takes a long time for rehab you need to counsel these patients that they cannot expect a miracle uh, recovery immediately incomplete reduction leads to increased incidence of deformity and chronic foot pain and as i said traumatic arthritis can be there and depends on the initial injury and your reduction as well so in conclusion these are commonly missed injuries um these should be suspected with 
every midfoot sprain they and in my protocol i if if patient comes with a midfoot sprain i investigate it exhaustively to rule out lis frank not to prove lis frank if you operating make sure you get a anatomical reduction a stable fixation and fixation with plate screws or both and you explain to this patient that it takes a long time to recover the key thing as lis frank himself have said and this is nothing more adapt to lis frank injury a surgery is bright when operating but it is still brighter when there is no blood and mutilation and yet leads to the patient's recovery thank you very much guys